Hello, my name is David Byant. I'm a senior storage solutions architect here at AWS. And today we're going to be discussing copying data to Snow devices using the NFS client on Windows. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is enable NFS on the Snow device. We'll start this by pinging our Snow device to ensure that it is on the network and visible. Here we can see that the device is replying to pings. So we'll go to AWS Ops Hub next. AWS Ops Hub is the graphical user interface and we're going to sign into a local device. Here we click Snowball Edge, which is the device I have, and we'll put in the IP and then the unlock code and point it to the manifest file. The unlock code and manifest file come from the AWS console in the Snow section. So we'll click sign in and we can see our device is already unlocked and we'll give it a profile name of NFS1. So we'll save this profile and now we see the device in its state of unlocked. So let's click on it and here we can see all the things that we can do with the Snow device but we're going to click configure manually under NFS. So let's click enable and start and the first thing we're going to do is select the network interface we're using which is the SFP and assign an IP address to it. So let's put in the IP address and then the net mask. Now we can't allow all host or restrict by subnet. We are going to use the allow all host just for simplicity in this demo. So let's click start NFS. Now this will take several minutes to initialize and bring up the NFS services. You'll see first the state becoming active and an IP address showing up and then it's going to attempt to mount the NFS export from the Snow device as a drive on Windows. If you don't have the NFS client installed you're going to get an error and we're going to show you that here in just a moment. So here you can see we've got active and we have an IP but we have a fail to initialize data transfer error. This indicates that the NFS client has not been loaded on Windows, so we will need to take that action ourselves. So let's start by going to Server Manager, and then we go to Local Server, and then we go to Manage, Add Roles and Features. So we Click Next to do role base, click Next on the server, and then click Next to go from roles to the features. And we're going to select Client for NFS and click Next, and then Install. This is going to take a few minutes, and then it's going to come back successful, and we're going to close it. Now, at this point, we are ready to mount the NFS exports. You can see our exports here. We have buckets which is shows all buckets and then you have specific exports for each bucket that you've associated with the job. And you can see our allowed host is set to everyone. So the next step is to mount it as a drive. So to do this we're going to mount the buckets export using uh, the command prompt, so CMD. This does not work in PowerShell, it's a different command. So first thing we issue is the mount command and we see there's nothing mounted. So we're going to do a mount, give it the IP, a colon, and then a forward slash and the export name, so buckets in this case, and then we're going to give it the drive letter, so Z drive, and you can see we have mounted it. We're issuing directory commands to show it's there. We're going to go into our bucket and we are ready to make use of this. Now that we've got it mounted, let's make our copy. And we're going to do that using RoboCopy. So we'll start by checking our destination directory, make sure it's empty. It is. And now let's go to the source location where I've created about 13 million 4K files. So let's issue a directory and you'll see these 4K files. We've got quite a few of them. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch all of them. Uh, nor am I going to make you watch the entire copy. Let's issue the RoboCopy command, I'm giving it the specific copy flags of DATSO in this case, 
but really DAT is all you need. Slash mirror for mirror. So anything that's deleted from the source is deleted from the destination on subsequent runs. Then I give the source location. Then the target. So you see that the bucket, the mounted drive, and a prefix or subdirectory as we commonly call it. And then I give it a flag for multi-threading slash MT, and I'm telling it to run 16 threads. So let's issue the copy job by pressing enter. And you can see the job is spinning up. And we'll start task manager so you can start see when it starts transferring as well as what you see in the window. Slide it out of the way. All right, so you can see we've got a little bit of CPU utilization, just a little bit of memory utilization here. Nothing extravagant. Um, and a lot of the memory is in a virtual machine that's actually running on this host. So let's click over to Ethernet. We can see some traffic happening. So we'll click over and we can see we have some data moving and now we see that reflected in the RoboCopy window as the things are flying by. So now let's discuss a few other copy tools. There are a number of other common copy tools. There's XCopy, uh, there is a TAR command for Windows, uh, Windows Explorer and FastCopy. Some of these are single threaded like XCopy and some of the tools don't handle millions and millions of files very well like Windows Explorer. The problem with TAR is it doesn't allow you to break the file at the boundaries required, which is five terabytes on a SNOW device. So this Windows TAR is not complete. Now fast copy is a tool that a lot of people use and it does work. So you can make use of fast copy in addition to the RoboCopy tool that I showed you. And there are other common tools you may use as well. I hope that you find this video helpful and thank you so much for watching.